you're like that baby in terms of your knowledge about Python, then you are a Python baby and you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll give you an introductory lesson on how to program computers using the Python language, and you don't want to miss it. Python is one of the most popular and powerful programming languages in the world. It's using robotics, artificial intelligence, deep learning, data science, and many other cool applications. Before I get into the primary content of this video, I just want to say a word about closed caption and subtitles. For those of you who are watching this video in a country where English is not the primary language, these are the steps you should take if you want to see the closed caption or the, the subtitles in your language. If you're doing this on the phone, let's say, for example, you want to see the captions in Portuguese. Then you click on the video, go to settings, you click on CC or closed caption, subtitles, and then you activate auto translate. You choose Portuguese as your language, and you got to make sure that the CC or closed caption is is turned on. But if you want to do this on a computer, just open your browser, type YouTube, click on the link. You can pick any video. So I'm going to pick uh, this one here. I'm going to pause the video a little bit. Okay. So as you can see down here right now, there's a few icons. One is CC for closed caption. And this little cog here is for settings. Sometimes this is not visible. So if I play the video, so if it disappears, all you have to do is bring the cursor over the video. So this will show up down here. So you come to this little cog for settings, click on it, and click on subtitles. Right now it's off, so I'm going to turn it on first. And I'm going to pick English Auto Generated. So now that's working, I'm going to go to Subtitles again and choose Auto Translate. And now I can just pick a language that I want to see captions on. I'm going to pick Portuguese just as an example to be consistent. So you choose Portuguese. And now when you play the video, the captions are in Portuguese now. For this lesson, instead of installing a code editor on your computer, we're going to be using a web-based platform called My Compiler. With My Compiler, you have nothing to download to your computer, so you're not going to get stuck on the technicalities of how to properly install the program in your computer. And you can save your work. And above all, it's very, very easy to use. If you find this to be very easy, let me know. If you find it to be difficult, let me know as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is what you're going to need in order to start learning how to program computers. I'm going to take you to a site called My Compiler. My Compiler, like that. And uh, the first link that appears is the correct link. So I'm going to click on it once. And what you see here is a number of icons that represent different programming languages okay so the language we're going to be programming in is Python this one right here but before you click on this I just want to show you something as you can see here I'm already signed up so let me just get out of this here I'm gonna sign out and show you what it looks like in the beginning so this is what it looks like when you haven't registered with this website there's a sign up that's why you register all you need is your email address and the password and then once you register you can just log in and the advantage of logging in is that anything you're working on you can save it and then you can review it later so I'm gonna log in now and again so you can see the process and then we go from there let's see So I'm there now, see my name appears over here. And as I bring the cursor 
right over my name you can see there's account settings and there's my programs so once you have your account which is a free account you can have all your programs saved right over here so anytime you want to review those uh, programs you create you can just go and click here you can also modify your programs update them or share them you can do a lot of things all right so like I said we're gonna click on this here first Python and I'm going to remove this from here. I'm going to start from the basics. So I'm just going to write a note here to myself what we're going to cover here. We're going to discuss, we're going to review uh, my compiler, which is going to be pretty quickly. And then we're going to write your first program. Write your first program, okay? So in continuing reviewing the compiler, there's this button over here called recent if you click here you're gonna see even if you haven't registered you're gonna see uh, all the programs that have been updated or uploaded by people who are using this platform uh, to write code so you're gonna see the programs that you uh, save yourself or that other people save you don't have to save your programs but if you do I think it could be helpful all right but if I were you, I, only, I would only save your programs once you register because now we can easily find them back, like I said, by going here and going to my programs. So anytime, let's say, let me show you my program. So if I click on recent, it says, do you want to leave this page? I say yes. And then, actually, these are, the recent, these are all the programs that have been uploaded by other people as well. Okay? So once you have yours registered you can just go to my programs now you can see all the programs that I have uploaded so you're gonna see at C punch room up here that's because these are programs that I uploaded myself alright so you got to do the same thing once you have registered like I said it doesn't cost you anything and anytime you want to go back to the first page where you start programming you just go here to my compiler click once and then it brings you back to this page. We're gonna click on Python again, and then we're gonna start with uh, writing code as soon as I finish reviewing my compiler. So there's three tabs over here. There's code, input, and output. When you are on a certain page or a certain tab, it's blue. So that means that we are in the code tab right now. That's where we can write code. Then you can click on input, this is where uh, if you write a program that requires the user to offer an input to enter information this is where the user would enter the information to make the program work and then the final tab output is where you're gonna see the result of your program after it's run okay going back so you can see there's two buttons over here this one is to run your program once you finish writing the code and this one here is to save the program if you want to save it okay so that's pretty much it for my compiler now we're gonna write your first program if you're enjoying this video so far take a couple of seconds to give it a thumbs up and click on the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next videos and stick around because at the end of this video I'll give you a few important tips on how to speed up and deepen your learning of Python so let's continue with the lesson now and it is a tradition in programming that when you write a program your first program you basically write a program that's going to print the words hello world on the screen of the computer that's what traditionally everybody does that's what we're going to do so to do that in Python you need to use a uh, command called print so if it writes okay I'm going to write this command print lowercase it makes a difference if you if you write something uppercase capitalized or lowercase it makes a difference because the the language Python is going to look at these things as as uh, separate things as different things okay so the name of the command is written in lowercase you write print and then open parenthesis so anything you want to print on the screen on the computer when you're using Python you write inside the parenthesis if you want to write characters like names phrases messages symbols uh, you use quotes you have to open quotes like that you can use double quotes as you see here 
or you can use single quotes if I can type it single quotes like that either way is fine it's gonna work anyways so I'm gonna write here hello world which is the tradition hello world so as soon as you have a chance to, to have a computer uh, you should go there and do exactly the same thing I'm doing in this video okay that's all we need to do so we see here it's a phrase inside the parenthesis of the command print and the words have to be in quotes now all you have to do is run the program by pressing run and it prints hello world let's make this a little prettier and put a little uh, exclamation mark there we're gonna run the program again and that is hello world now we're gonna do a little modification to this program and instead of saying hello world we're gonna say comma and say hello poca Maria okay we run the program and there it is hello pocket Maria very easy very simple but don't get uh, misled by this because programming can get really complex pretty fast so you're gonna start slow so you can grasp everything all right so uh, continuing I said that this print command is used to print things on the screen of the computer we can print words and phrases and characters but we can also print numbers so to print numbers I use the same I'm going to use the same uh, the same function up here oh, by the way this command print is a function in Python so a function is is a block of code that does something and this particular function prints stuff on the screen of the computer so let's say you want to print something other than words or, or phrases or names so you're going to print numbers all you have to do is put the number inside the parenthesis no need to put quotes okay let's say five if I want the computer to print five on the screen when I run the program by pressing here it's going to print five there so five here is a number however if I do this put five inside quotation marks now this is not a number anymore this is a string a string in programming is anything that's within quotes in Python these could be single quotes or this could be double quotes like I'm using double quotes right now so it looks like a number but it's just the image of the number you cannot use this for calculations so we're gonna run the program when you see it printed it looks exactly the same thing as when you run and print a number but this one is not a number this one is a string let me prove it to you so let's say if I do this 5 plus I'm sorry plus 5 so I got 5 plus 5 without quotation marks they're both inside the parentheses of the print command if I run this here it should give me the result of 10 and it works it gave me the result of 10 right so two numbers being added very simple but if I do this put quotation marks around this 5 and quotation marks around this 5 so now it looks like we adding 5 plus 5 as two numbers but we are actually adding concatenating or adding uh, putting side by side two different strings let me run it and you can see what I'm talking about you see it looks like the number 55 but all we have here is 5 5 together it's not adding those two numbers because these are no longer numbers because now they are inside quotation marks so in program you have to know the difference between a number and a string so every time you put something inside a string even if it looks like a number it's a string okay and the other thing is if I remove the quotation marks from one of these numbers and try to add this so one number has quotation marks or so one number is a string and the other one is a real number so let's see what happens so it gives you an error so this is how Python tell you that there's an error to the, to the code it tells you which line there's a problem so it says here the problem is on line one and it says which uh, code that created that problem so is the, the print statement 
that you see here and then it tells you the type of error that happened because uh, of this line it says can only concatenate or, or in other words put together strings not int and then here is an abbreviation for the word integer or number whole number all right so you cannot you cannot uh, add a string plus a number a real number you can add a string plus another string or you can add a number plus another number and make a calculation but you cannot do like string plus a number okay because these are two different types of data as promised here are a few tips to help you learn faster and deepen your knowledge of python number one you need to get familiar with python and the best way to do that is to read and watch videos regularly. That's going to give you familiarity with the language and it's going to make your learning process much easier. Number two, you got to practice at least five minutes every day. And that is better than practicing three hours once a week. Because practicing every day will give you something that practicing three hours a week won't give you, which is consistency. And you need consistency in order to learn faster. Number three, you got to learn the syntax of the language. This is just like grammar rules. You need to know the rules in order to not make mistakes when you use the language. And that's going to save you a lot of time. Pay special attention to those uh, indentation rules because that's going to save you a lot of time as well. Number four, as you begin learning Python, you're going to come across errors all the time. And if you learn how to interpret these error messages, it's going to simplify your process. It's going to uh, expedite your learning because you're going to know right off the bat, you know, where the error is and what type of error that is. If you don't take time uh, to learn the messages or to learn what the messages mean, then your learning process is going to take longer. And I'm, I'm, I'm culprit of that as well because I didn't pay close attention to messages, error messages in the beginning, and it took me a long time to realize how important that was. Number five, you got to ask yourself why something, why a certain concept is being presented, and try to answer that question by yourself. If you do this, it's going to give you understanding and comprehension of the language. It's going to help you uh, deepen your knowledge of the language. Number six, think of ways to apply what you learn. I mean, if all you do is copy what, what people present, what I present, then uh, you may be able to memorize sequences of instructions, of instructions. But that's not going to be the same as learning how to... Uh, that's not going to be the same as having a, a deeper understanding of the language, knowing enough to be able to explain to people what things mean. Ask questions in the comment section below each video that I post. I'll try to be as prompt as possible in reading the questions and answering them uh, to help you in your learning process. If you ask questions, then uh, that's going to help you not get stuck because when you get stuck you may get frustrated and you might even think about giving up on learning how to program because you think it's too hard so the moment you start getting stuck on something just post the question and i'll try to answer that as fast as i can make sure to check out my next video on variables and if you haven't watched my video on binary tree yet just click on its thumbnail I'll see you next time.